Throne Room Face-Off with Sanctuary of Reality, my comic review series. Time now for Cerebus issue 175, the 25th chapter of Mothers and Daughters, and the first chapter of the Reed's phone book, which is the ninth overall Cerebus phone book. Uh, you know how to get this, right? Yeah, okay. Victor Reed, an author of the pamphlet prose booklets called Reed's, recalls the series of events that led him to his current place in life. Having spent 16 years writing historical fiction concerning the relationship between Syrianism and Kevilism, the sudden takeover of Eos by Syrianist had virtually overnight turned his Reed's into major sellers. Now considered a popular author, this leads him to drink. His attitude shifted to far more morose and self-depreciative at conventions as he continued to dive to the bottom of a bottle. Victor Reed relates to us how his pal new series of reads featured a matronly Lady Howe, and how Victor had reacted when he discovered the illustrator of said reads, an M. Zuli had drawn her as a buxom harlot. Victor stormed over to Zuli's place, where his attempts to chastise the illustrator fell apart when he instead fell enamored with Zuli's model, Beth. Victor spent weeks visiting Zuli's residence and speaking to Beth, getting nowhere with her, but proving that she was an adequate muse, which he admitted the importance of a model to Beth. Inspired by his attention, Beth proceeded to demand royalties from Zuli and was replaced by another model. Heartbroken, Victor sold off his rights to the Palnu series to his publisher, House of Shadows, in an effort to get out of his contract with them. In an effort to find a new publisher, Victor attended a Reed's trade show where he was beset by multiple anxious giants offering him the world for him to join their companies. Things got worse at the overly crowded bar. Was he able to find the right publisher for him? In the papal throne room, Salentius Poe, Lestoria, and Cerebus finally come face to face with Siren and her guards. Poe does all the talking here. He denies watching her throne, having had his fill of them lifetimes ago. He points out that truth is what remains when illusions have been stripped away. He points out what will happen if her guards kill him in Astoria, namely, Cerebus will slaughter Siren and the guards with ease, unite the eastern and western churches, and rule the land uncontested. What requests will Poe have to Siren to assure this doesn't happen? Henry Wotton, who Victor recalls having a literary dinner with uh, in the Reed's portion of this issue, is yet another Oscar Wilde analogy. One of whom was actually mentioned by the series' Oscar way back during Jocko's story. There's actually a load of comic industry references in this issue. Um, for instance, M. Zully is, seems to be a reference to the uh, uh, artist, comic artist, Michael Zully. Uh, who notably drew some of the issues of Sandman and was one of the co-creators of the Puma Blues, which Dave Sim actually published in the 80s. Davis Diamond and Madison is a reference to the two biggest comic distributors at the time, which were Diamond Comics and Capital Comics. Dennis Eastman of Kevin's Kitchen Enterprises is a conglomeration of Dennis Kitchen of Kitchen Sink Press and Kevin Eastman, the Ninja Turtle guy, from uh, who was the publisher of Tundra uh, at the time. Mike Prosserman of Vertigo Horse is an amalgamation of Mike Richardson and Jerry Prosser of Dark Horse Comics. The giant guy with the strawberries and the deviant tag was is supposed to be Jim Shooter who was formerly a Valiant and then of Defiant. 
Kim Grinch of Hey Buddy Enterprises is a combination of Kim Thompson and Gary Groff of Fanographic Books. As you can tell from that, most of Reed's is semi-autobiographical. Victor Reed is basically Dave Sim filtered through common issues of a lot of comic writers at, uh, of this era. It's not quite a one-to-one -one comparison, but he's definitely drawing upon inspiration from his own life mixed with that of other creators that he knew over the years. You know, despite the abrupt change from pure comic art to mostly prose, this isn't so bad at first, no. Uh, the story of Victor Reed is actually intriguing. There's a bit of humor here and uh, in there with the absurdity of the publisher's sizes, Wotan's witticisms, and the whole bar scene. What makes it less than welcome is merely the timing. You don't get to the end of women and want to do anything other than follow Swintius Poe, Astoria, and Cerebus into confronting Siren. Instead, that's given as little attention as possible with just six pages of the 20 pages of this issue devoted to the comic part and the rest devoted to something that seemingly has nothing to do with the rest of the story being told. That gets the bulk of the issue. That, I think, is part of the reason why Reads is so difficult for so many readers to deal with when reading through Cerebus. Uh, it becomes a challenge to read the book which in turn leads people to readily dismiss it entirely because of the difficult themes later on. I feel the prose bits reek a little bit of a creator that doesn't actually want to do a book anymore and instead is shoehorning in stuff that actually interests them. Why couldn't he do a spin-off book or, or wait until after Mothers and Daughters main storyline was over? Well this is addressed in issue 186 to a degree Basically, he felt that now was the time when to strike the iron while it was hot. However, Dave is working within the boundaries of his own fictional universe to in introduce an analogy of himself. It's very broadly a fictionized version of himself. Here's the fictional you. Here's yourself. How do you properly bridge these two points in the narrative? That's really what's going on, going to happen soon, slowly as we go through. And it's done cleverly, and as much as I can express disappointment in choosing to do it now, when I'm really interested and invested in what's going on with Cerebus, he does it very well and methodical. Instead of making Cerebus his mouthpiece, as he did with Spawn number 10, and will do again during latter days, he chose to birth a new character to fit this bill. Why do so? Well, what better way to actually put yourself into a book than to formulate the existence of a cipher? Like I said, there is a method to his madness, and I'll explain it as we go along. It's kind of like the movie adaptation with Nicolas Cage. The author is absorbed by the fiction there. Instead here, it's a willing choice. Next time, Poe continues to get a word in edgewise. <laughs>